Can't decide in torn between a romantic, comedy, action, or an indie film to watch for the weekend? Well, well, well. Golden State Media Concepts Movie Podcast is your ultimate guide to the latest movies. Join us as we dissect the latest on the blockbusters. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Movie Podcast. And welcome to GSMC Movie Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Cynthia, and I'm here with my Keith. co-host. Keith, my name he is beat Keith. Me, he beat me to it. I was just like waiting for uh, you to interrupt at some point of my introduction wait, to... But no, I never do that. You definitely do that. No. Yes. Yes. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I was just waiting for it. I was like, when is he going to come in? Okay, fine. No, but we're good. I'm sorry. We're good. We're good. No, I'm awful. It's fine. A little bit. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm totally JK. Wow. JK. Hey, if I actually thought you were horrible, Hurtful. like we're in this studio recording weekly episodes. Like, That's true. If we had, if I had an issue, I don't think we'd be working together. Right? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I have an issue and we're still working together. Uh oh. You didn't tell me anything. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I just have to be different than I was the last podcast. Last podcast, I was like, oh, Cynthia is so great. So this one, I feel like <laughs> you, I don't. You got to like humble not, me a yeah, little bit. Humble yeah. me. You're like, you know what? You're not that great. <laughs> you're just like, you know, not bad. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks, Keith. You <laughs> are welcome. You are acceptable as a person. Acceptable. Yes. Okay. You know what? <laughs> You know what? Uh, Let's move on to what movie you saw this weekend. Because you finally Sonic went to a the theater. Hedgehog. Did you really? No. Uh, okay. I'm disappointed. <laughs> You've been talking. I wanted to. Uh-huh. I, I did. But then when I like was looking at Showtimes, I was like, oh, this movie's still in theaters. I should go see it since it won like the Best Picture Award. So obviously we're talking about, or I'm talking about Parasite. I went and saw Parasite. Okay, so. when you talk about it, please don't give too much detail because I definitely want to go watch this movie. But I want to know your thoughts. Like, okay. what did you think of Parasite? Because we saw the trailer and mm-hmm. we both were pleasantly surprised. There mm-hmm. was an unexpected twist to it. So I want to see how the Parasite, did it meet your expectations? Did it not? It did not meet my expectations. Uh, I feel like you're like a hard critic. I, d- I didn't. I, I didn't like it. Stop. I really did. You're kidding. No, and everybody's conflating me with the other person who said publicly that they didn't like it. And I just want to say, I didn't like it, but I know a lot about movies because I love film. And it's not that I'm right. It's just that I didn't like it. The movie is executed well. Cinematography is good. Editing is good. The dialogue is good. The plot is good. And there are some, like, interesting and, like, innovative sections with, like, good symbolism and good framing and exposition. Like, it's not like the movie is, like, bad. I just didn't like it personally. Does that make sense? I mean, but you just listed all these things that are good. Yeah. What about it, did like, didn't do it for you? Well, without, like, ruining it for anybody who wants to see it, um, I just – I – I really like a movie where I feel like emotionally invested uh-huh. in the outcome of whatever story is happening. And I did not feel emotionally invested in any part of the movie. Like I wasn't rooting for the main character. I wasn't rooting against the main character. I wasn't rooting for any tertiary characters or against any tertiary characters. I held like a general amount of like, apathy or distaste for every character that was in the movie Hmm. and i think that that's like partially intentional and the movie is like interesting and does try to do some pretty cool stuff but ultimately like 
if I was going to like watch a movie within this same genre, I would just tell people to go watch The Killing of a Sacred Deer because it's better. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I'm still meaning to watch that movie, by the way. Like, you should. It's yeah. definitely out of all the like movie trailers and movies that we've uh, talked about on the podcast. Like that one still sticks out to me because it's just very it's, interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting. So and that movie's really, really good. And the reason that I'm conflating or that I'm saying that the killing of a secret deer is similar to Parasite, because if you've seen both, a lot of my friends who have seen both are like, why are you comparing them? And just like the relationship between the fathers and the sons of the main character in both movies, mm-hmm. uh, the kind of idea that like justice or right and wrong exists on like a scale and you kind of have to like deposit like like karma. There's kind of like a karma thing, mm-hmm. karma element to it. Um, and then the idea of like differences in like class or differences in like possession of power are um, pretty apparent in the movie. So uh, I think that just those things are what make it kind of similar. But I don't know if I'm like kind of grasping at straws when it comes to comparing this movie to The Killing of a Sacred Deer. I just – to me, it felt like the sa- two of the same movie. So – Mm. And Killing of a Sacred Deer did this concept in a more interesting fashion, in my opinion. So, okay. But what, what would you rate Parasite out of a 10? Mm, gosh. Objectively, I would have to give it like an eight and a half. Mm-hmm. But like if I was giving it a score that included like my enjoyment and not just the fact that I know that it's like technically sound according to the craft of filmmaking, I'd give it a seven. Okay. Like it's, you know, I'm not going to hate it if somebody puts it on, but like if I'm being super honest about an hour, no, more like about 50 minutes in, I was like, okay, is this done yet? I'm kind of done with this. Like, wow. Was the movie really long? No, I think it's like Like two hours. Yeah. I think it's like a two, uh, I think it's two hour and is it two hours and 12 minutes? I want to say. I have a theory. I have a theory that movies that tend to go a little over two hours are for the most part, pretty good oh yeah you're right like, you're right if a movie is like only an hour and a half long i'm a little hesitant to watch it because i'm like right mm, i don't know how much like character development there is like <laughs> i don't know how much i'm going to be able to be attached to these people. right yeah, so usually when like like the two netflix picks that i chose today mm-hmm. they're both over two hours long oh wow and I don't know. I think that's like my theory. When I see it's over two hours long, I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, this has to be good. Yeah, this could potentially be interesting. Right. No, and like, it's not that, I, I guess I liked, the, the length of time is necessary, and it does do like some interesting things, like I've said. It's just that like, I don't know. It just, it felt, so the movie was written in under a month, right? So like, oh, okay. they wrote this movie in a month, I want to say. So to me, there's quite a few like, plot holes and things that I noticed that I was like, what? we're not going to resolve that. Like that seems like a pretty obvious mm. conclusion and a good storytelling mechanic. Why are you not talking about this? Mm-hmm. And then like different aspects of the film are like hyper realist, hyper realistic. And then other aspects of the, f- of the film are not hyper realistic at all, which is also like lame and frustrating mm-hmm. in the first place. Um, well, I'm so like shocked by this review right now because I was for <laughs> sure g- expecting like you were going to be raving about it. I know, and most just of my because friends again, were. The, just because the trailer, we were impressed with the trailer. Yeah, I think the trailer actually gave me a little bit of false expectations and false hope for what the movie was actually going to be about mm. because it kind of sells it as having this like element of horror to it yeah i was gonna ask you like what what would you classify what genre right is um, it horror are no, there like it no. is not a horror movie it's not even a psychological thriller movie and that was the part that like uh, kind of frustrated me because mm-hmm. i was like expecting more of that right. because of the trailer and like the only elements that you get of that are super brief and like everything else is just kind of like I don't know. I guess like mediocre slice of life is what I would call it. I don't uh, know. The whole movie is like a a pretty. It's a decent and kind of interesting com- commentary on like class relationships and the the income inequality and things like that that are present in 
or that is present in a lot of Asian countries. And you can definitely tell that there are like cultural references. Mm-hmm. There are specific things that like we miss out on. And I actually like I wanted more of those. I thought I always think that stuff is, is cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but and I don't know. It's just the movie. It didn't it just didn't feel like it added anything unique to the to the cinematic space that it was occupying. That's crazy to hear because again, they won best picture mm-hmm. at the Oscars. So, well, I mean, like I saw the the Shape of Water a few years ago when it won best picture and like I would say virtually the same thing about it that I say about, about Parasite. Parasite. Yeah, like it was good and it was like technically sound, but it just it didn't I it didn't connect with it, mm-hmm. and I didn't connect with this either. And I don't think that it's like a cultural gap or anything like that. I think that it's just that, to me, I've seen other films that I felt made similar commentaries in more unique and interesting ways. And I had expectations for this film going in, which I should have known is a recipe for me to not like something. Because nine times out of ten, if I have expectations, they're not met. So, uh, yeah, I I don't know. I I hate telling people that I don't like it because everyone gets upset with me for not liking it Mm -hmm. a lot of people really really like it Mm -hmm. but I didn't see any of the other films this year so I wouldn't have any suggestions as to what other films should have won the award for best picture but this one and this was like I said this one was good but it wasn't amazing you didn't enjoy it as much as you thought you would yeah that's why in life I would still say go see it that's why in life you just can't have expectations because (laughs) they just lead to disappointments that's like the number one rule I have learned just like (sighs) No expectations, man. Just go with the flow. Yeah. Well, on that optimistic note, we're going to take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, we'll talk about Cynthia's picks and the funny thing that happened when we started talking about podcasts. Anyway, it's hilarious. We'll be right back. Want to know the latest and hottest music hidden in the airwaves? Don't be left out. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Music Podcast. Keith keeps you on the loop with everything you need to know from pop, rock, hip-hop, and the top 40. And we'll throw in news of your favorite artists, concert and tour dates, and so much more. Listen no further, because this is the gold standard in music podcast. Hello and welcome back to GSMC Movie Podcast. Right before the break, Keith quickly mentioned about what we'll be sharing on today's show. Ten minutes of... Oh, wait. Oh, never mind. Different thing. Oh. I think I <laughs> quickly talked about Parasite. And I was like, yeah, ten minutes of quickly talking about Parasite. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> so for this week's episode, Keith and I decided to share our top Netflix picks, but... Mm-hmm. But Keith misunderstood. <laughs> and did. okay, when you guys think of Netflix movies, you guys think of like Netflix original films, right? Because like Netflix, it has just been like spewing out hella mm-hmm. movies left and right. Mm-hmm. So I, my two picks that I chose are actual Netflix original films, but Keith's picks <laughs> are just movies that happen to be streamed on Netflix. Just movies that happen to be streamed <laughs> They're not on just movies, Netflix. but I, the only, well, I won't like ruin it, but, um, <laughs> yeah, so it was just funny because when I was like checking those, I was like, wait, Keith, like these are movies that are on Netflix, but they're not actual Netflix originals, but yeah. it's fine. Maybe next week you can like share Netflix originals and I'll just choose. Well, funny tidbit. I've only ever watched, like when I text you and said I've literally never watched a Netflix original movie. You're missing out. I think I've watched one. I watched the Invader Zim Netflix original movie. And other than that, I have not watched a single Netflix There's original so movie. There's so many. I feel like I you, I feel like you've might have watched a Netflix original and, and not have even known because mm. I feel like usually it just has like, the only reason how you'll really know is that mm-hmm. when you go to the home page on your Netflix account, it has a red N. At the top left corner, but like really that's, I mean, nowhere really throughout like the film, even in the beginning credits, maybe sometimes they'll say like a Netflix film or whatever, but 
Anyways, we just wanted to mention that just so you guys don't get confused. Funny. Yeah. Right. So. Also sorry. Right. I'm also sorry. It's okay. <laughs> well, we'll have time to like update our Netflix picks. So I'm going to start off with, I'd say, I don't, I'm not going to like, there's no particular order for yes. mine. I love None these both equally. Yeah. So the first Netflix pick that I want to share with you guys, this was a trending topic on Twitter when it released, is the movie called What Happened to Monday. I was instantly enticed it to It was this two days ago. What? Monday. What oh, yeah. Monday? It, it, it was two. two days ago. <laughs> it was two days ago. I was like, what? <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Um, but I was instantly enticed to this movie just by the name alone. Like I saw it was trending on Twitter and I'm like, okay, hey, what does, what does this movie entail? Like mm-hmm. what happened to Monday? That's just a really, that's a good attention grabber. I'd say I'm yeah. going to, I'm going to read the synopsis for you guys. It goes in a world where families are limited to one child due to overpopulation, a set of identical septuplets. I didn't even know that was a word. Septuplets must avoid being put to a long sleep by the government and dangerous infighting while investigating the disappearance of one of their own. So in a nutshell, in this world, there's a one child law due to quote unquote overpopulation and for survival. Nobody can have more than one child. If families have more than one child, then they take the extra sibling and put them what's called a cryo sleep mm-hmm. and put them to sleep like until the data shows that it's okay for to bring those siblings back out from their sleep. Right. Does that make sense? So yeah. that's pretty much in a nutshell the story or the plot of the whole film. Mm-hmm. And I just thought it was like really interesting because – I that was just totally not what I was expecting from the title of, of yeah, the film. Yeah, what happened to Monday sounds like a cute indie rom right, movie. Yeah, right. And the the movie was directed by Tommy Workola. Mm-hmm. Writers are Max Bokin and Carrie Williamson. Cast includes Numi Rap- Rapace, Glenn Coase, Willem Dafoe, Christian Rubeck, and others. And I want to talk about the main character, Numi Rapace. So she's this Swedish actress. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that she was. Wait, act- is she Swedish or Swedish? She's both. <laughs> <laughs> she's both. <laughs> um, but she. What's really interesting. I was able to like search up some trivia facts about her because I mean she played seven different characters in this movie. You guys. Oh wow! And seven characters. Like she plays the seven septuplets the seven sisters in the movie that's crazy and all she played them phenomenally like they all have each have distinctive traits and she was able to bring those traits out to life like i applaud those people who are able to play it's already hard to play like two different characters in the movie i mean so, it's hard to play one character right true i mean I'm, I, we're not <laughs> totally right you're absolutely mm-hmm. right but playing more than one character in a movie that's pretty challenging mm-hmm. and numi rapace said in an interview that she loves taking on roles uh well one in action films and two she loves playing characters who are emotionally and physically abused or scarred women so hmm. she likes feeling damaged that's what i got <laughs> um and also another cool thing about numi rapace is that she insists on doing her own stunts whenever possible so all of like that's the cool. running scenes the fighting scenes and you can tell actually because there's some scenes like in the movie where like and one of the uh sisters of the seven sisters she plays as like this boxer mm-hmm. and she's like has all these abs and like her midsection is like super cut so i'm like you could definitely tell this lady trains like mm-hmm. she's really about that um well, i mean i'm sure they put life. some makeup on there too oh to, for like, sure to like enhance it yeah but there's a lot of action a lot of running in this mm-hmm. movie and i didn't realize she's also the star in the girl with the dragon tattoo yeah I didn't realize that. Like, yeah. I didn't put two and two together. So, oh, okay. um, which if you did, you'd get four. True. <laughs> True. Look at you, just I witty right here, my, very witty my right first now. First dad joke of the evening. Is it? I think so. I think no, I you it. said is she Swedish or Swedish? Oh, you're right. That Thank was you. number yeah, two. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> but another interesting little fact about the movie is that mm-hmm. the movie was shot entirely in Romania. Romania. <laughs> Yeah. I like the ad labs, the ad libs you're adding to this. <laughs> well, Romania is like the OG place where like, um, 
the vampire legend came from. So it just oh, makes really? sense that it's like Roman, yeah. Roman, yeah. Oh, ah, right. Like, You're totally like right. Dracula. Right. And another interesting fact about the movie, which I like yeah, yeah. quickly pointed out when you were watching the trailer. Yeah, Keith. we watched the trailer uh, together and then at the end it was like Seven Sisters. Right. So Seven Sisters was the original film title. Which is a lame title. It is. And luckily, once Netflix gained rights and bought the movie, mm. they changed it back to the original title, which was what happened or which is what happened to Monday, which I'm so glad they did because what happened to Monday is just way more interesting than Seven Sisters. Like if I would have yeah. seen that said Seven Sisters, that would have just killed like it just feels so lo- corny. Right. Yeah. Right. What happened to Monday is like mysterious and interesting. And then like if you watch the trailer and it's like what happened to Monday, it's like, oh, that's like both haunting because of the premise of the story that I just learned about. And also like really kind of, I don't know, happy go lucky sounding. So it can't mm-hmm. be that bad. Yeah. Right. I just really liked it. I like the title as well. Yes, I like the title. And just overall, I think the acting is great. The the fighting scenes are great. I thought it was there was a great storyline. It was exciting. And as always, I you might disagree with me on this because you like mentioned this about Inception, I think, last week. Mm-hmm. Um, how it kind of touches on our society and like real world issues. And it almost like wants to alarm us. Not saying that we have overpopulation. That's not what I'm saying. But right. I like that it kind of like it's trying to freak us out a little bit. Yeah. And I like it. Yeah. Not saying that we are overpopulated or that I believe this is going to happen. But it is kind of interesting to see like how far can we go with technology and how far are people willing to go for survival. So overall, I highly recommend what happened on Monday if you haven't seen it. Yeah. I loved cool. it. Yeah. Yeah. What were your thoughts of after watching the trailer? Just watching the trailer, it definitely looks interesting. If I had time to watch it, then I would probably give it a shot. It looks like a good like action sci fi. Yeah, thing. I think you'd uh, you'd really enjoy it. Actually, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, it's on Netflix. You have no excuse. I. You have no excuse. I don't technically have Wi Fi at my house. What? I don't have internet. What about on your phone? I have the Netflix app on my phone, so I'm able to. I mean, watch I do, it. but like, do I want to use my data on that? Uh, true. Yeah. So I do have an excuse. You Boom. do, I guess. But you still need to watch <laughs> what happened on Monday. I am interested in watching it. What was your next pick, Cynthia? So this one, it shouldn't be a surprise because this movie was also like a trending topic on Twitter. And it, should, it was great, too. I really liked this movie. Bird Box, countless memes came from this movie. It's that movie about the bird in a box, right? Um. Not necessarily. Like, <laughs> there are birds involved in this movie. Oh, are but, there really? Yeah, actually. Oh. So you'll huh. see it once you see the movie because you have to see the movie. I'm not. Can gonna you guys? Watch b- it. What? I'm not going to watch it. Why? I don't like Sandra Bullock. You're her, a hater. I her knew it acting is not that great. Miss Congeniality was like the peak of her of her uh, career, and then after that, she just hasn't been very good. What do you mean? It's yeah. You just said it's hard to act in one role, like. You yeah, got to give her some. I mean, yeah, sure. She's a fine actress. She just, I don't know. I don't like her. Wow. I don't like her acting. Haterade. I am not a hater. Haterade. Okay. I'm going to read the synopsis really quick just in case you haven't seen the movie. Five years after in. I can't say that word. <laughs> Ominous. Ominous. I was going to say omen. Here's my problem. Hold on. Super (laughs) random. I always want to like pronounce whenever there's a lot of vowels next to each other. I want to see them in Spanish. So it's like I when I look at that word, it's like I want to say ominous. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I I pronounce sounds way fancier than ominous (laughs) because in Spanish you like pronounce the words Mm -hmm. how they're written. So like Mm -hmm. that's why like I always get confused when I see like a lot of vowels. Anyways, that was so random. English is complicated. It's (laughs) it's a silly language. It It really is. So I got to click my mind to English right now. Five years after an ominous unseen presence drives most of society to suicide, a mother and her two children make a desperate bid to reach safety. So basically, this takes place in a post-apocalyptic world Mm -hmm. where there is this unseen creature and if you look at it by the naked eye, it like does something to you and... 
it actually never shows the like monster or creature in the movie. So it's like a, not a concrete object. And once you see it, it forces you to commit suicide. Yeah, and, it like shows you like your deepest, darkest fear. Which right. I got from the so that's trailer. pretty much, that's pretty much the whole movie. So, um, this is directed by Academy Award winner Suzanne Beer. Writers mm-hmm. include Eric Heiser. Heiser. Heiser, yeah. Heiser. <laughs> Heiser, <Heiserer, laughs> right. Heiserer, 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 Heiserer. And Josh Mallerman. And this book is actually based from Josh Mallerman's novel, Bird Box. So he actually has a, um, a book called Bird Box. Hmm. And the cast includes Sandra Bullock, Trevante Rhodes, mm-hmm. John Malkovich, mm-hmm. Sarah Paulson. I love Sarah Paulson. Jackie Weaver and more. Uh, interesting fact about Bird Box. 95 million Netflix users viewed the movie within the first week that it premiered. Wow. I was one of those 45 million. I actually downloaded, I actually made a Netflix account to watch this movie. Oh wow. Right. Like, cause I was like, hey, I saw all these memes on Twitter and I like wanted to like laugh at the joke too. Like I wanted to be yeah. laughing cause I was scrolling. You would have FOMO. I, I totally, <laughs> <laughs> I totally get FOMO. Like I yeah. literally was like, wait, no, I want to like be part of like this click. Anyways. So something, uh, another interesting, uh, little fact about bird box. So we know there's a lot of memes that came after this movie premiered and the movie also sparked a trend of people trying to travel, um, while blindfolded or do tasks when blindfolded, which my honest opinion, I think it's like totally stupid. Um, people do really outrageous things online for like yeah. entertainment and like, retweets. well, I mean, it could be fun if you had like a good friend who was willing to like make sure you didn't hurt. People yourself. were trying to drive blindfolded though. Like that was like, people were actually doing outrageous things oh, well, that's as dumb. the bird box challenge. Okay. And, um, Netflix many had to issue a statement, I assume. Right, so Netflix <laughs> issued a statement to discourage viewers from taking what was known as the Bird Box Challenge, which it's actually crazy that they had to do this and go I to know. this lane. So it's like, people, do not try this at home. Like, it's like the Tide Pod Challenge that was supposedly a right, thing. Yeah, right, yeah, right, right. But um, Or like there's some like TikTok school break challenge thing that happened. I don't understand. T- I, I don't TikTok either. is like a whole other – that's like what, Generation Z now? Yeah, that's, well, it'll die just like Vines did for like – my generation had Vine. Right. I remember Vine. Yeah. Okay, I was a Viner. I yeah, loved yeah. Vine. Um, but anyways, I another. I'm just throwing like quick little like facts about this movie because mm-hmm. I'm sure most of you have already seen Bird Box. Not Keith though. <laughs> um, the movie was filmed in several parts of Northern California. So in the river, there's a river that uh, Sandra Bullock and the two kids are riding throughout the movie. And that river happens to be the Smith River in Del Norte County near the California-Oregon border. And a lot of times throughout the film, they mention cities like Sacramento, Stockton, oh, cool. Sausalito. So it's uh, primarily Wait, based... Sausalito or Sausalito? Sausalito. Sau. 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 Oh, mm-hmm. okay. So it sounded it's, like you were saying Sausalito, and I was like, I want to go to Sausalito. I love salsa. <laughs> <laughs> I love salsa. No, Sausalito. Does everybody salsa to get everywhere? No. They're just always dancing everywhere they go? Can you imagine? That'd be tiring. <laughs> you'd but, be super... You'd be cut. 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 Yeah. I'd be tired. I'd be tired. <laughs> but overall, I love this post-apocalyptic thriller. Mm-hmm. I like the storyline personally. I know there's a lot of like movie, like dystopian movies, and a lot of people think it's like played out. Mm-hmm. But I personally don't think they're played out. That like I really like the storyline. Um, I know you have opposing opinions. You don't like Sandra Bullock. Uh, what else did you think about the trailer? The trailer that we watched mm-hmm. made it look more like a horror film mm-hmm. and it's definitely not a horror. I mean, it looks interesting kind of, but like overall, I think I could do without it. I don't think I'll ever like miss out on anything by never watching it. So you should watch what happened on Monday though. That one I definitely am interested in. Okay. So yeah. Well, I'm glad you liked at least one of my picks. That's, I mean, yeah, you probably only like one of mine. So. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yours are definitely interesting. And as we'll, usual. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll definitely talk about them after this break. 
Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. SMC movie podcast. I'm I, Keith. I gave you that dust there. I was like, you better start talking. I was like, you better start talking. No, nah, I didn't. I didn't feel the death stare. The no. death stare. The death star. The death star. Yeah. That's what we're going to call your eyes from now on. The death star. Death stars. And tell your boyfriend that he should be scared of those. They destroy he planets. Is. <laughs> he is. For sure. Uh, okay. So we have. Now we're going to talk. About his Netflix picks that aren't really Netflix, Netflix picks, picks, but they're on Netflix. Okay, so these are the movies that I think you should be streaming on Netflix that aren't necessarily made by Netflix, for which I apologize. I'm sure that you are all dying to know which Netflix movies I like. I haven't seen any of them. I'm sorry. <sighs> what happened to Monday will be your first. Okay. Well, I mean, second, technically, if you cut the Invader Zim one, which I wouldn't really recommend to people because the original Invader Zim series was so much better than this, but it's regard. We're not talking about that. Anyway. <laughs> My first recommendation for a movie that you should stream, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. And I assume you've never seen this. Absolutely not. Oh, let my me, gosh. Okay. Let me just say one thing. Ugh, I, I can't believe you haven't seen this. This is a classic. I don't like movies that are like from the past, a blast from the past. Does that make sense? Like, I don't know. I think it's because like this movie was shot or released in 1974, right? Five. Five. And... I don't know. I just feel like the trailer alone looked like a bad high school play. <laughs> I, like is, just like that is just kind like of the point. I mean, obviously the technology, like back then, technology is obviously not as advanced as it is now. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's mainly why I just can't get into it because I'm like a huge visual person, and if I visually just like can't enjoy it, then I just like don't want to see the movie does that make sense that's not to say that like this isn't a good movie mm-hmm. i don't think it's like for me sure well I'll, let me just give you a synopsis and see if it changes your mind uh history is turned on its comic head when in 10th century england king arthur travels the countryside to find knights who will join him at the round table in camelot round table gathering <laughs> yeah i know it's making me hungry, hungry. For pizza yeah <laughs> Gathering up the men is a tale in itself, but after a bit of a party at Camelot, many decide to leave only to be stopped by God, who sends them on a quest to find the Holy Grail. After a series of individual adventures, the knights are reunited, but must face a wizard named Tim. Killer rabbits and lessons in the use of holy hand grenades. Their quest comes to an end, however, when the police intervene. Okay. Just what you would expect in a Monty Python movie. So <laughs> this humor is quite different. Yes. It is 1970s surrealist British humor is how I would describe it. How did you come across this? Because you weren't even My born. You were not even movie. born. My parents adore this movie. Really? Everybody okay. Everybody in their generation loves it. All of my friends in high school loved it. Um, except for maybe one. Most of my friends in adulthood love it. Um It's made Monty Python is like a comedy troupe that was super popular. I don't I think they were (coughs) mostly popular in like the mid 60s through the mid 70s. Um, And this movie was actually funded by like Pink Floyd and Led Zeppelin. What? Yeah, they 
they provided a ton of money for the film. I'm surprised. Yeah. Well, I don't don't be because a lot of film critics rank this movie as one of the top 10 funniest movies of all time. Funniest? Like, seriously. This is on a few people's lists. This is ranked as number five best comedy movie of all time. Wow. Yeah. It's, That's definitely. It is hilarious. I cannot believe. The trailer does not do it justice. I don't think so, Dad, because you were like laughing. Oh, because it's like, really funny to me, but like. The movie is much more accessible than that trailer was. Mm-hmm. To be completely trailers honest with don't you. really do the movies justice. Like we just said, they like alter the perspective of the movie a lot. Um, yeah, yeah. And something that's also really interesting, just to show you how dedicated these filmmakers were. If you've seen the movie, you're familiar with the Black Knight scene. Mm-hmm. The Black Knight is played briefly by a one-legged actor after his first leg is chopped off. So the person who's playing a one-legged knight is one-legged. For like, Actually, for like one second, yeah, which oh. is hilarious to me because they had absolutely no reason to do that. <laughs> like, just really, re- what? So, what is like? I don't really know what British humor very, is. What is it? I just describe it as being like very dry, very like curt. You know, mm-hmm. like it doesn't drag on, and the punchlines are like. So, like, old British humor is kind of similar to modern American humor. Modern American humor is based off of, like, references and puns and Mm wordplay to where, like, if you watch an episode of Bob's Burgers, like, it's just constant. You've got a joke happening, like, once every, like, three to four seconds. Mm -hmm. And there's it's, like, a little pun that you chuckle at or, like, a reference to something. And that's kind of how the... Like, British people used to do it, just at a little slower pace. Mm -hmm. So they'll reference something, and it takes a little bit of time, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, like, it it feels like a slow slow turning on of a light bulb is how I would describe this particular kind of humor. Like, it's a light bulb that is slowly getting brighter, and then it's like, ding, and that's the point at which you laugh. But, like, Mm -hmm. the whole time that it's getting there, it's just like a slow trickle because it's not like anybody knows that a, a joke is happening. So, anyway. Okay. That's how I would describe it. I really, really, really recommend this movie if you haven't seen it and you're into British stuff. If you're into British stuff and you haven't seen this movie, I have no idea how you have managed to not see it. It's <laughs> seriously, it's a classic. Like it will they'll show it as like part of comedy studies at like film schools for a long time, in my opinion. So Interesting. Okay, so Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Yeah. I may need to be, watch it to be proven wrong if it's I mean, Highly at least give it, like, the first half hour. Like, that's what you should just commit to watching. Half hour. Like, 30 minutes of it. I think if you don't like it after 30 minutes, then you're not going to like it. So Only if you watch What Happened to Monday. Oh, uh, fine. You said you <laughs> would. You said you okay. would. Well, my next uh, movie that you should stream on Netflix, my pick, um, is Inglorious Bastards, which is written and directed by Quentin Tarantino. And it has your standard cast for a Tarantino film, sans Samuel L. Jackson. So if you're expecting to see Mr. Jackson in this movie, you will not. Um, In German, occupied France, young Jewish refugee Shosanna Dreyfus witnesses the slaughter of her family by Colonel Hans Landa. Narrowly escaping with her life, she plots her revenge several years later when German war hero Frederick Zoller takes a rapid interest in her and arranges an illustrious movie premiere at the theater she now runs. With the promise of every major Nazi officer in attendance, the event catches the attention of the Bastards, a group of Jewish-American guerrilla soldiers led by the ruthless Lieutenant Aldo Rain. As the relentless executioners advance and the conspiring young girls' plans are set in motion, their paths will cross for a fateful evening that will shake the very annals of history. That was very long. It is. A that was really a very long, long synopsis. synopsis. Yeah, well, because they have to like establish that this is like historical fiction. So like it's based on things that like kind of actually happened, but it ultimately comes to like a different conclusion or solicits a different outcome than the history that we know. Mm-hmm. So you have to like kind of establish that, and then like there's like a backstory within the backstory because like I didn't even remember that one of the main points of the plot that gets them to the movie theater is that some officer falls in love with uh or is seduced by whatever it is uh a woman who watched her family be killed by nazis like that i didn't even remember that that was part of the the uh, plot so i think mm-hmm. that that's funny <laughs> so. right and i haven't seen this movie in like 
some time. It so. came out in 2010 or 2012, maybe. So it's I thought 2009. Older, 2009. 2009, 2009 2010. This came out when I graduated high school? Yeah. I feel like that's not right. I, that's what I saw on the, on the trailer. It said official movie trailer 2009 in parentheses. Huh. Weird. 2009. And maybe it's because 2009 doesn't feel that long ago. 2009 so, is uh, yeah, when I graduated high school. I was a freshman. I was wow. a little freshman. <laughs> a little fresh. Uh, I mean, I hope you're still fresh. Like you don't, you don't show up and like smell or anything like that. No, this is what? a small studio. So, like, uh, no. I mean, you're like right next to me most of the time, <laughs> so I hope not. Yeah, yeah. Should we have a discussion about personal hygiene right now? Personal hygiene? I mean, we could in the health and wellness podcast. <laughs> I'll go on there and talk about how uh, uh, the transition from like not natural de- deodorants to natural deodorants is is not fun. But anyway, yeah. that's a whole new thing. Anyway, back to this movie, the right. thing that we're supposed to be talking about. Um, the one of the characters in the movie, played by actor Christoph Waltz, uh, he actually Christoph Waltz was the first actor to ever win an Oscar for playing a role in a Tarantino movie. Which I thought was really surprising because wow, yeah. Quentin Tarantino did a lot of really cool movies. He did um, uh, Pulp Fiction. He did Reservoir Dogs. I think he did Kill Bill before this as well. Lots of movies that were generally liked by, you know, the Academy. So I was relatively surprised to see that he he hadn't had anybody else win. And then Simon Pegg was originally set to play a part in this movie, but was replaced by Michael Fassbender, which I think is fine, ultimately. Mm-hmm. But it, I think it would have been pretty funny to see Simon Pegg in this film. I think he's a good actor. So, Okay. But you've seen it. What did I've you, seen it. Do you remember it. liking it or uh, hating it? Or? I remember liking to see – I liked seeing Brad Pitt. Yeah. That's about it. Like I said, I've watched – He's a handsome man. I watched this – it was a long time ago. Like I have terrible memory, actually. <laughs> and – you know, I had I rewatched Bird Box this morning a little bit just to refresh my mind, even though Bird Box didn't come out that long ago. But I just like tend to forget movie scenes like very quickly. So I can't tell you much about Inglorious Bastards. I'm not sure if I was like super in tune with it. I don't know. It, uh, yeah, I, I, I can't give too much opinion. Just I liked seeing Brad Pitt. <laughs> Yeah, well, nothing wrong with that. It's always nice to have a movie that's good and then something that's good to look at throughout the movie. Right. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I definitely enjoyed it. So I would recommend you check it out if you haven't seen it. And if you like Quentin Tarantino movies, this is definitely classic Tarantino. Last movie that's on Netflix that I'm going to mention that you should stream. It's definitely a recommendation for the people who are a little bit more out there. Um, if you're familiar with the movies that I recommend quite frequently on here, then you've probably seen it already. But just in case, uh, The Lobster is on Netflix right now. I personally love The Lobster. It's directed by Yorgos Lanthimos, and it stars Colin Farrell, which is – who Colin Farrell is like Lanthimos' favorite actor, I think, because he has him star in like – I think he's starred in like two of his three last like full-length movies. Um, so, Yeah. Yorgos Lanthimos is the guy who directed to The Killing of a Sacred Deer. Oh, okay. Uh, yes. I, I'm, in, I, okay. I'm yeah. interested. Yes, yeah, she's, Cynthia still wants to see The Killing of a Sacred Deer. I know, I really, she is that, is that on Netflix? Yet. I want to no, watch it. No, it's on Amazon. Ugh. Amazon Prime. It might be on Hulu. I don't know. Ugh. Regardless, um, the lobster synopsis is a love story set in a dystopian near future where single people are arrested and transferred to a creepy hotel. There they are obliged to find a matching mate in 45 days if they fail they are transformed into an animal and released into the woods what i mean that's like interesting Mm -hmm. interesting plot but like you'd have to see it in order for me to like really talk to you about like what i think of the film but i totally did not get that from the trailer from the trailer the trailer i literally you could tell from my face i was like what is this makes absolutely like i was like what is this weirdness like and the movie is wackadoodle like it is out there i just really loved it so i it's interesting i recommend it pretty highly single people are arrested and transferred to a creepy hotel yeah well i won't get arrested we won't get arrested neither of us would get arrested so we're good to go we both got so's yes so yeah but 
Definitely a really enjoyable movie. If you like things that are a little bit more out there, I would really recommend that you check this out. Colin Farrell is excellent. There's a lot of other good actors and actresses in this movie. And it was one of Yorgos Lanthimos' first fully English films. So he did like a, a short called Necktie that was technically his first English film. But this is like his first full-length film. So that that's pretty exciting. So... If you, uh, yeah, if you watch the trailer and you think it looks interesting, give it a shot. So those are Kate's Netflix picks that are on Netflix that aren't Netflix originals, but they're streaming on Netflix. Yeah, yeah. So eventually I will get around <laughs> to watching some Netflix original movies and then we can talk about those. Yes. Yeah. The the whole time that I was talking about these, Cynthia had a look of general uh, disappointment on her face. I could tell that she was not happy with, what? with the fact that I kind of got off the hook by just picking three movies that i that i liked no i i barely read it this morning i was like it's fine like they're on netflix but i definitely highly highly suggest what happened to monday if you haven't keith yeah. looking at you i'll watch it eventually eventually maybe. you should yeah i think that's all we've got for you guys this week yes so we'll let you get going uh before you head out, make sure you like or subscribe on your way out. Maybe leave us share. a nice review. Mm-hmm. Share. Follow us on the Twitter, mm-hmm. the Twitter or the Facebook. Mm-hmm. So that's Facebook. All of that. Yep. So thanks for listening, guys. And we will see you next week. Have well, a great week. Well, you'll hear us next oh, week. Oh, yeah. Here. Listen. Yeah. <laughs> You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Movie Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network, from movies to to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program